Welcome back to my channel and today we are doing my requested bookshelf tour. I did one back in January of this year but I feel like my shelves have changed so drastically since that video so I figured I'd do a new one, show you guys all the books on my shelf and hopefully you enjoy this. I am not gonna go through every single cover and like title and author but I will go through every shelf and kind of talk about each books on that shelf and kind of a favorite and a least favorite on each shelf to kind of make this a little bit more fun. So without further ado let's just get into this tour. All right so starting with kind of just the overview of everything so over on the left hand side right there that is kind of the contemporary slash thriller horror shelf because I have the least amount of those books and then the rest are all kind of sci-fi fantasy books. So that is the overall bookshelf and then I've got this like mini bookshelf next to it that holds some of my manga which hopefully that collection will grow and then my Harry Potter collections. And then up top here I've got my classics uh, from Barnes & Noble with the Sherlock Holmes and up above there I've got the Harry Potter illustrated editions that I got for Christmas. So let's go into each shelf now. So starting with the top shelf here in my contemporary collection I've got my Frederick Bachman books here, I've got The Mothers, How to Walk Away, Things You Save in a Fire, these are not in any particular order, but I will say I think my favorite on this one, this is so hard because I have, if you've watched my top 10 favorite books, I've caught three of them on this shelf alone. So I feel like I'll Give You the Sun, Where the Crawdads Sing, and Beartown are my favorites, but I also absolutely loved All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. That is an amazing book and I haven't yet read The Mother's uh, The Dream Daughter Homegoing, so those I still need to read. And then my least favorite on this shelf probably has to go to my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. I usually love Frederick Bachman books, but for some reason this one just didn't connect quite as much. So that's probably my least favorite on this shelf. So moving on to the next shelf, this is another shelf of contemporaries and historical fictions. A little heavier in the historical fiction for this one. I think obviously I have two of my favorites of all time on this shelf. So these Kristen Hanna books are my absolute favorites. I have to say The Muse though has one of the most stunning covers I've ever seen. I also love This Tender Land and Miracle Creek. I haven't read Once Upon a River yet, but look at that cover. I also absolutely adored The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. Oh my goodness, that one made me ball. And Little Fires Everywhere is also great. So there's just a lot of good books on this shelf. Between the World and Me was amazing. I highly recommend that one. And I think my least favorite on this one might go to, I want to say The Muse, just because it was a little slower paced and not quite as engaging, but I do love the cover. I, I can't get rid of this because of the cover. It's so pretty. So that's this shelf. All right, so now we are at some thriller and horror books here, and I've also got my little Tim Funko Pop with the White Rabbit from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. So my favorite on this shelf is obviously Imaginary Friend. That is no surprise, but I also adored the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I thought that was great. All of these I actually really, really love. They're all some of my favorites, uh, except I haven't read My Best Friend's Exorcism, but look at that cover. And I also haven't read um, Nosferatu. So those are the two st I still need to read. I absolutely love this hardback of Stephen King's It, but it is so heavy, you guys. It must be like 20 pounds. I also absolutely love Jane Harper's work. I think she does really, really well with writing atmosphere and characters, and The Last Mrs. Parrish is one of my favorite thrillers. So honestly, it's really hard to choose a least favorite on this shelf, but if I had to choose, 
I would say maybe it's Jane Harper's second novel, Force of Nature. Uh, this one was just slightly more disappointing um, because I loved the dry so much. But overall, all of these books, I highly recommend. I love them. Moving down to the next thriller shelf, I've got another kind of random assortment of books um, that I don't qu love quite as much as the ones above, except maybe The Whisper Man I thought was really amazing, and I absolutely loved The Sundown Motel, which is why that one's featured. But in terms of my least favorite on this shelf, well, I haven't read some of them quite yet, but I would say Sometimes I Lie or I just read The Chalk Man and was not a huge fan. You'll see that in an upcoming video, my thoughts on that. Um, so that is probably my least favorite, actually. I just want to shout out some of these books that were sent to me by the authors because I think they're so cool looking. Look at that book. And then When the Sky Goes Dark by Oliver C. Seneca. That's another one I'm really excited to read. So that is the shelf. And the last shelf is a combination of romance, contemporary, historical fiction, just all the paperbacks that I have. The way I have it set up is these shelves are actually a lot taller than the rest of them. So I have kind of two layers here and I just put a block of wood to stand up those other books on so that I'm taking advantage of all of the space. Favorites here, obviously Daisy Jones and the Six is displayed. I love that one. You guys know I love Room so much. I love the Hearts Invisible Furies so much. Another really underrated book that's hard hitting is We Are Water by Wally Lamb. I think it's amazing. My husband and I are a big fan of Eric Larson, so we have all of his books so far, except for his newest one. And then of course I loved Fix Her Up. Beach Read I thought was great, so adorable. These are two of my favorite Christina Lauren books. I'm also a really big fan of Leanne Moriarty and Jojo Moyes, so you can see I have quite a few of their books on this shelf. And then The Hating Game I love. My least favorite on these shelves all combined, mm, I might say The Last Anniversary by Leanne Moriarty. I think that one was just her weakest that I've read so far. I mean, it was still fine, but it was just, compared to her other books, my least favorite for sure. So that is this shelf. All right, and I have one more thriller shelf here that was just kind of left over from the previous shelves, and these are all my paperbacks. So I've got the three Gillian Flynn books that I obviously loved Gone Girl, that's why that one's displayed. And her other two were good, just not as good as Gone Girl. I love The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in that whole series, I think it's great. I don't have any of the ones though that came out after Stieg Larsson died. I don't know if I will ever read those. I'm very excited to read these two. I've heard amazing things. And then Dot Hutchison's series, hit or miss, I would say. I love The Butterfly Garden, the first one. I haven't read The Wood yet, but I really want to. You guys know I love Behind Closed Doors and Behind Her Eyes is also amazing. And these are the two Riley Sager books that I've read so far and have enjoyed. My least favorite on this shelf is probably ah, The Roses of May the second book in Dot Hutchison's The Collector series. I thought that one was definitely the weakest. And my favorite, obviously Gone Girl, but I also loved Behind Closed Doors. All right, now we're getting into the fantasy. So this is kind of a hodgepodge of YA and adult. Um, I've got A Curse So Dark and Lonely displayed because I really, really enjoyed this one. And The Night Circus has one of the most stunning covers. So I love displaying that one, but it's not my favorite. Uh, I liked the writing, but I thought the plot was kind of confusing. So that definitely worth a reread there. A couple others, I do want to give a second chance to the Witchlands, is that what it's called, that series? I still need to read the sequel to Crown of Feathers, and I still need to read Child of a Mad God. That one is on my list to start soon. So that is this shelf. My favorite, obviously, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, but my least favorite, oof, I might have to say Wind Witch, just because I found it a little bit forgettable, but I do want to give it a second chance. All right, moving on down, I left a little space here because I know once I finish the fifth season, I will probably want to get the rest of the series. So that will take up the majority of that space. Lots of goodness on this shelf. Uh, I have not started Stephen King's The Gunslinger yet, and I've gotten through the first three Witcher books so far. So the rest of them I'm very excited to get to. 
I loved the Black Prism. You guys know that I'm really enjoying Lightbringer, so I went ahead and got three and four. Haven't read those quite yet in the middle of the city we became. And of course, the fifth season I'm going to get to this month, so I'm very excited. So this is all adult fantasy series that I either am excited to start or have started and I'm loving. Moving on down again. So this is another shelf where it's mainly featuring Jay Kristoff uh, because I love the Illuminae series. I think these spines are so cool all together. I really enjoyed the Lifelike series. I thought that was a fun YA sci-fi. Nevernight I enjoyed overall for sure, but it's not a favorite. I do love the covers though. I think that they are so stunning. And Storm Dancer, unfortunately, this might be in a future unhaul because I just wasn't a huge fan, but I love the cover so much. So it hasn't been unhauled yet, but maybe in the future. And then I really enjoyed An Enchantment of Ravens. I have not read Margaret Rogerson's other one yet, Sorcery of Thorns. And then of course we've got Sunborn Rising was another book sent to me by the author and I love that cover and how gorgeous it is. My favorite on this shelf is probably Illuminae. This is one of my favorite YA sci-fis. And then my least favorite is probably Storm Dancer, unfortunately. And then the bottom shelf here is another collection of some fantasy and I've got my middle grade series of unfortunate events series in the back and then the Raven Boys. I love, love the Raven Boys so much and the whole Outlander series. I have read all of them. My goodness, there are some great ones, there are some slow ones, but overall I really, really love the Outlander series. The characters are so great. My favorite on this shelf is probably Written in My Own Heart's Blood, the eighth and final book, or not final, <laughs> the eighth book in the Outlander series. And my least favorite is probably The Fiery Cross. I thought this one was one of the slowest of the Outlander series so far. All right, so starting at the top here, we've got my classics collection up above all of my shelves. I love the bookends. I got these for Christmas actually, and that light does turn on. All of these, except for the Sherlock Holmes collection, are from Barnes & Noble, and I just love, love how they look all lined up together. My favorite so far on this one is Jurassic Park for sure. I absolutely loved Jurassic Park. And then my least favorite, I have read uh, The Sun Also Rises from Ernest Hemingway's collection, and just wasn't a huge, huge fan. So that's probably my least favorite so far, but I had to read it because it was my husband's favorite. <laughs> Moving down here, we've got the top shelf in my next fantasy shelf and the Giver Quartet is there. I love the Giver so much. The Aragon series I have. The Jacoby series is a lot of fun. That's a YA kind of Sherlock Holmes retelling. And then of course, The Lord of the Rings, Return of the King being displayed because I love it so, so much. My favorite on this shelf is probably The Two Towers. I thought that book was wonderful. And then my least favorite is probably The Gathering Blue, the second book in the Giver Quartet. I just thought that that one was the least impactful in the series, but overall that quartet is still great. So that is the top shelf in my middle fantasy bookshelf. Moving down, here's the second shelf, and these are hardcover sci-fi and fantasy books. Sleeping Giants and that whole series. I love, love that whole series, The Themis Files. The Anomaly is highly underrated. It is a horror sci-fi and it is so great. I love that book. Dark Matter, one of my absolute favorites and Recursion. I got Michael Crichton's Dragon Teeth because I am now obsessed with Michael Crichton after reading Jurassic Park. A couple of these I haven't read yet, including Leviathan Wakes. I'm very excited to read all of these though. I really like The Oracle Year. I thought that one was highly underrated. So I have this gorgeous Spinning Silver UK hardback because I'm so obsessed with this cover and the uprooted paperback, which ugh, I, that's a whole other story. And then Rage of Dragons in hardback as well. And then of course I've got Chip and Dale here. My favorite on this shelf is Dark Matter. I love, oops, I love Dark Matter so, so much. And my least favorite so far is probably Only Human, just because it was such a disappointment with the rest of the series being so amazing. Oh man, I, I wish it had ended differently, but that's just me. <laughs> 
We've got my primarily Game of Thrones shelf, but a couple of other UK paperbacks here. So I absolutely adore these Game of Thrones editions. I think that they're so much prettier than just the standard US covers especially this one. Oh my goodness, I love these covers so much. I also love the UK co covers for And I Darken and the whole Conqueror saga I think are stunning. This Northern Lights edition is so pretty as well. Man, some of these UK covers are so gorgeous. Quite a few of these I haven't read quite yet. I have read all of the Game of Thrones books and I've read these three, but all the rest I haven't read quite yet. They're all beginning new series and I'm trying to kind of finish off series that I've started. Most notably though, I do have to read The Name of the Wind before the year ends. My favorite on the book is probably A Storm of Swords. This is a split edition of that third book in the in the A Song of Fire and Ice series, but I love the third book so, so much. And then my least favorite, I think I have to say Now I Rise, the second book in the Conqueror saga. I, I still loved all of these books quite a lot, but I thought the second book was just the weakest in the series, but I still highly recommend that series. It's very underrated. Moving on down, we've got my V.E. Schwab shelf and other YA and adult fantasy books. First of all, I love Vicious. You guys know this. I love Vicious so, so much. So I have Vicious and Vengeful. I've got the Dark Shade of Magic series. I've got her first middle grade book and her YA duology. I have read all of these V.E. Schwab books, but I have not yet read The Demon King by Cinder Williams Chima or Soulless, but I did find this hardcover at a used bookstore and I think it is so pretty. Look at that pink spine. And then of course, Peace and Turmoil is Elliot Brooks's book. So if you haven't checked out her channel, I highly, highly recommend it. And I think the cover is stunning. I also really enjoyed A Memory Called Empire. This is my first space opera that I've read and I thought it was so great. My favorite on this shelf is Vicious for sure, that is why it's displayed, and my least favorite is probably City of Ghosts. Just because it was middle grade, I was not the target audience, and just felt it was the weakest Schwab that I have read so far. And moving on down, we've got the bottom shelf, which is just YA, fantasy, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> We've got the whole Hunger Games set. I love, love this series. The Firebird trilogy is amazing and these covers are stunning for it. The Scythe trilogy, I love the Scythe trilogy, highly recommend. The Young Elites, I don't have the third and final book, but I love the first two so, so much. I probably won't buy Midnight Star because I did not like it. <laughs> Spin the Dawn, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to keep this for the long haul, but I do love the cover for it so, so much. This is a tight squeeze, my goodness. Look at that cover, it is so pretty. I have a hard time getting rid of books with beautiful covers. I've got the Wayward Children series, which I'm, I have mixed feelings on. I don't know if I love it, but I might continue with it. And then The Light Between Worlds I think is really underrated, but it's very, very sad, but it's also very beautiful. And then of course we've got a lot of Cassandra Clare here. I'm not a huge fan of the Mortal Instruments, but I did really enjoy the Infernal Devices. The Lunar Chronicles I thought were cute, but I think I was just a little too old reading them but I still recommend them. I think they're a really fun YA sci-fi retelling of all of these different fairy tales. And then the Strange the Dreamer duology, I absolutely love Strange the Dreamer. Muse of Nightmares, I still really enjoyed, but just not quite as much as Strange the Dreamer. It's starting at the top here now of the final shelf, we've got Little Baby Groot, who I love. We've got Leigh Bardugo, some of her books, including the whole Grishaverse books. I love The King of Scars, Naked. Oh, I love that. I don't even like the actual cover as much as I like it naked, so I just <laughs> keep it naked. We've got Mary E. Pearson's trilogy and her spin-off series of her original Remnant Chronicles. I like these books, but they're not my favorite. And then The Tiger's Daughter I thought was really beautifully told, but I DNF to the second book, so I don't know if I'll continue on with the series yet, but I still really, really enjoyed the first book, so don't want to get rid of them quite yet. I think my favorite book on this shelf is probably Six of Crows. I love Six of Crows so much. And then my least favorite is uh, Vow of Thieves, I DNF'd, and The Phoenix Empress, I DNF'd, so I'm not gonna 
include those. Ah, oh, this is hard. I think it's probably Ninth House so far. I need to give that one another chance though because I feel like that was just me listening to the audiobook and not loving it as much. Moving on down, this is another fantasy hardback shelf. Foundry side, I'm not even going to talk about it because you guys know. Uh, Shorefall I'm reading right now, so it's just the jacket. <laughs> The Winter Night Trilogy is stunning. I love it so much. Steel Crow Saga is one that I really want to start because it's a cross between Pokemon and Avatar The Last Airbender, and that sounds great. The Queen of the Tearling, I think this spine is stunning, and I love the cover so much. I found this used. The Aeronauts Windless, this is my first Jim Butcher book that I've bought, and I've heard that it's like a steampunk fantasy, which I've really been wanting to get more into. And I found this used, and I know that Jashana loves it over at her channel, so I really wanted to read that one. Poppy War, I really need to read. And then I did really enjoy the Red Sister, the Book of the Ancestor series, but I just can't find Red Sister in hardcover and it drives me nuts. And then The Savior's Champion by Jenna Moresi. She is a author, tuber, and I love her channel, so I'm happy that I have her book. Favorite book on this shelf? Obviously Foundry Side. Like, do, do we even need to talk about that? And then my least favorite, this is hard. I really, I don't think I have like an, any books that were below four stars, but I guess looking at it, maybe the Savior's Champion, but I still thought it was very good. Like I gave it four stars. So I still recommend this one. Um, so this one's hard because I, I do really enjoy all of these books that I've read on this shelf. Moving on down, of course, we have my Brandon Sanderson shelf, and I feel like I don't have to talk too much about it. They're all the UK paperback editions, and I love the white and how they all look lined up together. Uh, Way of Kings, obviously, is my favorite fantasy series so far that I've ever read. I have not yet read Elantris or Steelheart. Those are the only two books on this shelf I haven't read. I loved Warbreaker. I think the UK cover for this one is stunning. Warbreaker is also great, as well as, of course, Mistborn. That whole series is great. My least favorite Sanderson that I've read so far is the second era Mistborn trilogy or series. It's not a trilogy. He's coming out with more. <laughs> this series I'm just not the biggest fan of. I like Wax and Wayne, but it's just not nearly as epic, of course, as the original Mistborn, so I just have to stop comparing it. And then, of course, we've got King Arthur here. Moving on down, some more fantasy. I did go ahead and after reading Malice by the rest of The Faithful and the Fallen because I loved Malice so, so much, and I love how all of these books look together. First Law Trilogy, I did end up buying the rest of the series, and I know that it doesn't match. I need to get the other version of the blade itself, but that's just not a priority at the moment. Eye of the World, man, this I just did not enjoy very much, so I don't know if I'll continue on with the series. I'll have to see what I think of the TV show. Maybe something will click after I watch the TV show, but yeah, I was not a huge fan, so so far I just have the first book. And then I love the Chaos Walking trilogy so much. I thought it was really, really good. Very underrated for a YA fantasy series. My favorite on this shelf is probably The Knife of Never Letting Go. I love that book so, so much, but then it would be Malice as well, I love. And my least favorite so far is probably Eye of the World, unfortunately. But I also haven't read um, more than this. I DNF'd Burn, so I'm not even gonna count that one. That is the shelf, and the final shelf for my main bookcases is going to be this bottom one here where I've got Sarah J. Mass books in the back, all of her books so far, except for the fourth book in that Accord of whatever, Frost and Starlight or whatever it's called. Uh, and then I've got some sci-fi fantasy left over here. I am very excited to read The Theft of Swords, the Michael J. Sullivan series because I really enjoyed Kings of the Wild and I've heard that this is similar but maybe even better. I'm also of course very excited to read The Sword of Kai again. That one has been getting amazing reviews as well as The Girl Who Could Move Shit With Her Mind. I think that it, this is such a fun cover and title. I'm so intrigued to read that one. I found these editions of the Discworld series on Book Depository and had to grab them because I think that these covers are stunning and they're hardback. So I want to start collecting, if I if I enjoy Mort, I want to start collecting the Discworld series in these editions. I love Andy Weir, of course. I, I, the Martian is one of my favorites of all time. I would love to upgrade to hardbacks in these because I love them so, so much. And then I also have 
James Clyde and the Tomb of Salvation. This was sent to me by the author so kindly, and I think that cover is stunning. My least favorite book on this shelf is probably going to be how to Stop Time by Matt Haig. This was just not what I was looking for in this like time travel novel, but I do want to still give Matt Haig another try with The Humans, I think is his other book that I really want to read. And then my favorite is obviously The Martian. I, I love The Martian so, so much. And my last shelf, really quickly, I'm just gonna show you the, the covers. These dust jackets came from Nerdy Ink. I love her work. She's amazing. And then here I've got my Sailor Moon collections so far and the little Funko Pops. I've got a little basket for my bookmarks and my Kindle. And then I've got the first volume for Full Metal Alchemist that I still that need to it. read. That is my bookshelf. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of it. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I release new videos every Monday and Thursday. And until next time, bye!